All right, hi everybody. Uh, so we recently did a uh, another video on installing a drive wheel seal. Uh, we put that out a few weeks ago. I've actually done one in the past, a couple two years ago or something, on my my T6 T660 um, back when I was owner operating. Uh, so we got quite a bit of views on the, the last one was current one we did, and uh, some, a lot of comments and stuff like that. And I just kind of wanted to do a follow up video here because we got some comments um that were kind of i just wanted to address i know we'd replied to some of those uh, comments and i just wanted to kind of touch on a few of those points um first of all guys uh doing a wheel sale it's kind of a more intermediate uh you know type of skill level job i mean you know i'm not saying i'm not putting these videos out for everybody to go out there you know with no no skill or no real mechanical knowledge or, you know, if you've never changed a tire or changed your own oil, I wouldn't recommend you going out and, and changing a wheel seal because there, there's a few things you got to do or you could lose. This whole hub could come off with a wheel or on, the, on your drives. I mean, that whole hub with your axle sticking out and everything could come out and go down the road and run into a car or something. So it's, it's pretty critical um, that you do follow the right procedures depending on uh, what type of hub assembly you have. Um, and I'm going to touch on one of these in particular, or actually two of them in particular, um, that I think there was some misconceptions in the last video that I wasn't doing it right, and actually I'm going by the procedure for that type of hub, which um, there's there's a couple different procedures, which we'll go over in a second. Um, but again, guys, like, I, I like to put these videos out, you know, for people to see how stuff's done. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to say everybody, oh, this is a video, know all, do all, you know, you know, best tutorial or whatever. Um, it's good. I, I think I put out good information and it's fun. I mean, we like doing it and I know a lot of people enjoy watching it. Um, but again, like I said, not, not putting these out there. Everybody go out there and, and do this stuff on your own or whatever. You don't have any knowledge or, or whatnot. So uh, anyways, the last, uh, the wheel seal we did in that last video, if you watched it, and we'll put a link on this video in the description as well, if you want to check that one out, the full, full job, because I'm not, I'm not going through all the steps on here. I'm just going to touch on a couple points. And uh, we actually did a, uh, a drive wheel uh, we're doing a steer on this truck here so the last uh, type of hub uh, with that drive hub we did was the same setup as this and this is a uh, a Dana Spicer LMS hub and it's it can be identified by these rings so the uh, Dana Spicers they have a yellow ring and it, it says everything on there that identifies it and it actually goes around your locking ring like that and you'll have the inner nut on the inside and you have the outer nut on the outside um, with your other your locking washer and all that on there but you as soon as you see this yellow ring you know what this hub is now the con mets uh, the pre -pre uh, preset and preset plus ones I believe they have an orange or a red red ring it's been a while since I've done them but I think they're orange or red so when you get one with this plastic ring you know automatically it's something special so you're not going to use the regular <clears throat> TMC RP618 procedure, which is pretty much the, has been the industry standard for doing, uh, you know, for manually adjusting a wheel hub. Um, now the reason these are different because they actually have a spacer, that a, a sleeve that goes over the spindle here. And um, I'm gonna take that out here in a second, show you. So in the last video also, we didn't get to, we, I got a new tool from um, SKF. They sent me a nice uh, seal removal tool to try out, or they just, just kind of gave it to me, I guess. They sent it to me. Um, the last time we did, when we, in the last video, the wheel seal just fell out, so I didn't get to use the tool. But this one didn't fall out, so I'm actually going to be able to demonstrate. I'm going to pull this out, then I'm going to pull everything out of this and show you why that this hub assembly, why it's different than using the manual adjust hub procedure, which is, like I said, the, the TMC RP618 is where you would, you would torque everything down like 100 or 200 foot pounds, then you'd back it off, then you'd torque it again, and then you'd back it off, you know, a quarter of a turn, depending on how many threads there was per inch, or if it was a drive or a steer. I mean, there's a whole criteria for it, but that was like, that's been the industry standard. But I'll tell you guys, um, I do a lot of wheel seals. I mean, probably at least two or three a week, it seems like. I mean, sometimes I'll do, you know, three or four of them on one truck that come in. Uh, just depending on if they're leaking or not, if we're doing a brake job and we see one that's wet, we change. I go ahead and change it out because you're already in. Uh, but I, it's been I, actually the last manual adjust hub that I, I did was actually on my T660 because on the drives I had three wheels that had preset pluses, uh, comets, 
on three wheels and for some reason one wheel didn't have the the, uh, the spindle sleeve on it and I had to do a manual adjust. So I think I actually did the, uh, the TMC RP618 procedure in that video. So that's, that's a really, it's been a couple of years since we did that video. So you might be able to find that out there as well if you want to see how that manual adjustment was done. And then you check it with a dial indicator, your preload and all that or your end play. But these are different. So these, to take confusion out of it and, and to have less wheels flying off of trucks from mechanics not doing it the proper way, most of the industries pretty much went to these preset hubs to where I'm actually getting a whole new hub for this because the, the bearings are, are gone in this. They're, they're pretty, pretty bad shape. Um, so I have uh, the tool to press out the races and put new races and everything in. Um, I talked with a customer and he just, we, we just kind of got together on it and said we're just going to put a whole new hub assembly on it. So I'm going to get on to Peterbilt tomorrow and pick up a brand new Comet hub assembly. It's going to be this. It's going to have both bearings, the torques are the uh, spindle sleeve in it, and a seal already installed. And it's going to have a cap on each end. And when I get that, I just put it on, put the nuts on, and uh, the Comet, so you torque those down to 300, and there's no backing off. You never, ever back these off, these, these type, this assemblies. Once you tighten them, if to get the locking device in, which is uh, this ring, there is a peg on your inner nut, which you can see right there. So this goes on like that. So if for some reason these aren't lined up, you always tighten it up to a half of a hole. You don't want to tighten it over half a hole. If you, if you had to turn it more than that, then you probably wouldn't want to take it back apart and try starting all over again to get it in the right position. But you never ever back these off with a preset hub assembly. You always tighten it if you need to go a little bit more. You never back it off. And then once you put your other, your secondary nut, your outer nut goes on there. Those usually, I, I, on, on these LMSs, they go to 300 foot pound. Uh, on the, uh, the Comets, I believe they're like 200, depending on wheel position or whatever it's been. I'd have to get the, the sheets out. But you can Google all this stuff and you can actually get the PDFs of the procedures directly from like an LMS. You can get a Dana Spicer, you know, instruction sheet that has all this information I'm telling you on it. So um, get a little bit closer on that. So if you can see that, it actually said Dana Spicer, LMS hub, this side out, important C instructions. So he said, if you see that, you know you got something different than a regular manual adjust hub. <clears throat> All right, so I'll go ahead and get this out of here so I can show you everything that I just explained. We're gonna try our new fancy tool here since we didn't get to do it the last time. So this just sits in there and it's made to where it won't hurt that bearing. Uh, but we're not, we're throw, this is gonna be scrap anyway since we got a whole new hub assembly. And I always like to set this hub down on, on the, uh, the drum here to give you a little bit more leverage. But this guy here, uh, I can get it underneath of the rubber. And it pulled the seal apart. So that's the, these are two piece seals if you didn't know, and this is the outer spot, outer part of it. So this actually, these actually spin separate of each other. So, and there's the seal, so. Makes that job a lot easier than uh, using a pry bar or two pry bars and you don't take as big of a chance as ruining that bearing or race. And uh, SKF was nice to send this to us. And this is the uh, SRT-1 seal removal tool. So pretty nice unit. Um, I've used it a lot, it saved me a lot of time. And as you can see, I mean, it took me like 30 seconds to take that seal out, so. All right, so now we pull this bearing out. And uh, this inner bearing isn't as bad as the outer bearing was. The outer bearing's in, uh, it's in pretty rough shape. It's got some scoring and stuff on it. So and the race was even, looks even worse than this. So that's why we're just gonna replace the whole hub. So now here is what makes this hub special. This little tube or sleeve right here is what makes this different than a manual adjust hub assembly. 
So this actually goes up against that sleeve of the bearing right there. So when this is in the hub, these two bearings sit like this. So that's why you torque this down so tight. It's not actually pressing on the bearing cage itself. It's, it's pressing against this little carrier down here. So that's why I can torque that to 300 foot pounds and it's not causing a problem. Now, thing is, if you're only torquing this to 100 foot pounds, then backing it off and tightening it to 50, then you're backing off a sixth of a turn. This is all going to be loose. And, and I've had several wheels that have came in where I was able to take the nuts off like I put my socket on them and turned it by hand. They came off hand loose, and those are supposed to be 300 foot-pounds. And most likely, that's from guys not using the proper procedure. I mean, they will loosen up over time, yes. Um, you know, if this shrinks, this metal shrinks a little bit, if possible, or compresses, the word I'm looking for. Um, but I, I think it's not, it's not probably as typical as not using the right procedure. So this is designed, I mean, this is pretty thick. And it goes over this spindle here. So, I mean, it's made to be compressed you know, to 300 foot pounds or whatever the procedure calls for, for that type of setup. So, and I'll actually show you how this, so this is made, it goes, it's inside of the hub and it just goes right over there. So then you have a little better visual. So then you'd have your inner nut on there, your locking device, then your outer nut, and it just compresses all this. And that's why you can torque that so high and it doesn't affect the actual bearings. But if you're not torquing it to what it's supposed to be torqued to, you're going to have, that's all going to be loose or it could back off easier. Um, or, you know, this could even, the sleeve could turn or it, you don't know. So, I mean, they have a proper procedure for these. And like I said, these little rings, these plastic rings are what identify it. So, so I just wanted to clear that up. And um, I guess that's pretty much it as far as this topic goes. So, all right guys. So I guess that's pretty much for that, it for this topic. Um, I guess the, the main moral of the story here is, is here is the, when you're, if you're a new mechanic out there, um, you're, you're gonna see a lot of different things, a lot of different setups, a lot of different makes. Um, I mean, if you're, an owner operator, whatever, doing your own work, stuff like that. Always, always identify what you're working with. Don't just go by one procedure because it's not one size fits all for this. Now, I mean, back in the day when you didn't have these torque sleeves, or uh, I always want to call it a torque sleeve, I guess you'd call it that, but a spindle sleeve, and you were, you were manually adjusting those hubs, I mean, there's one industry procedure, and that, like I said, that's a TMC RP618. Um, is kind of what the industry got together and said this is what works and, and had less wheels coming off of trucks and all that. But today, um, pretty much industry standard, I've seen they've went to these, these preset uh, preloads uh, on these hubs. Um, so and like I said, you need, there's different ones out there. Um, some of them, it's different torques sometimes for different positions, like from steer to drives. Um, so you really need to identify what you have because uh, it's not one size, one procedure fits all with these things. And uh, like I said, this is, like I said, this is a Dana Spicer LMS, so that's what we follow a procedure for when we put this back together. So, like I said, I just wanted to kind of follow up with that last video and put that information out there because it seemed like there, I don't know, maybe people weren't, you know, a lot of videos I'll skip through and won't watch the whole video. So, I mean, I don't want to sit and, sit and say, oh, some, you're wrong or whatever. Maybe you didn't watch the whole video. Maybe just skip to where I was torquing it or something and said, oh, this guy's torquing this thing to 300 foot pounds. They don't know what he's doing. No, I mean, that's, that's the procedure for this type of hub. So, um, so I, get, I always, always like to give everybody the benefit of a doubt, you know, but, um, but always, uh, always, like I said, know with, what, know what, identify what you're working with before you use any set procedure. Now, like I said, if I don't have these sleeves, this, this type of hub, if we decide we didn't want to use this sleeve, then I could use that TMC RP618 uh, procedure with these bearings. And I actually, had, one time I called uh, ComMed about that because I had one on my truck that was, it was missing it. And I called him and said, hey, this has, all the rest of mine have the ComMed hubs with the, you know, the preset plus in them. And uh, this one doesn't. So, and he's like, yeah, go ahead and follow this, the RP618. So with it, so, I mean, if you wanted to take this sleeve out, you could still use this hub, but you would go by the RP618 procedure instead of, you know, the LMS or ComMet procedure. So uh, anyways, just wanted to cover that topic. 
and uh, kind of follow up with the last video because, like I said, it was kind of getting some comments out there that were kind of a little, little off, and I just wanted to kind of clear the air and set things straight for the most part, you know, on our on our end. Uh, but anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you just found us, please subscribe, uh, like the video as always, and um, always hit the uh, the bell <laughs> for the uh, for the updates. So let's forget that one. So. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, uh, comment, questions, and all that stuff uh, if you want. And um, we'll do the best we can to get back to you. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.